The story opens in a room in a residential building where Chen Yuan is looking at his phone screen and crying. The reason for his tears is the text that his girlfriend sent him. She is breaking up with him. He asks her what's wrong with her all of a sudden. While crying he texts her and promises to work hard and give her a happy life. But she blocks him before he sends his text. He lies over that chair like a dead person. His roommates do not know what is happening to him and call him to play the game. But he ignores them and runs outside the room. Seeing his strange behavior, they think it is another case of a breakup. It is the sixth time this month he has faced a breakup. On the street, people look at him and start whispering about him. They know Chen Yuan as a famous dog licker. Chen is here to meet the girl who just broke up with him. Her name is Shudong. She tells him not to behave like this in public as everyone is watching them. He tells her he knows she is angry with him, so he has brought her favorite guabao pork. He asks her to forgive him and not mention the breakup again. He will change whatever is wrong with him. People around them look at them and laugh at him while whispering about him. One tells the other that he has heard that Chen works four part-time jobs outside to buy her gifts. Still, he has been dumped by her. Shudong tells him that she is not angry. Her ex-boyfriend came to patch up with her. After thinking a lot, she felt that he needed her more. He gets angry and asks her what she thinks he is. Chen says that her ex is a scumbag. He asks if she has forgotten that he cheated on her. He also made her have an abortion. When he is yelling at her, a Mercedes stops by them. It's Shudong's ex. He tells her to get in the car. Before getting in the car, she tells Chan that it would be better for them not to meet again. She does not want her boyfriend to misunderstand her. She leaves with her boyfriend while Chen stands there and looks at them going away. Chen throws that food in the dustbin and gets it in a convenience store. He picks up a water bottle from the shelf and starts drinking it. He wonders why his heart is always betrayed and if he will be a dog licker for the rest of his life. He angrily crushes that bottle and decides there is nothing wrong with being a dog licker. Suddenly, he gets a notification that the most vigorous dog licking system has detected the host. A screen appears in front of him where his biodata and stats are mentioned. He is surprised to see that dog licking system and that he has plugged it in. He tries to touch that screen and wonders what that plug-in is used for. Unintentionally, he touches the breasts of a girl standing before him. She yells at him, calls him a pervert, and asks if he wants to get his hands dirty. She says he has been staring at her boobs for a while Ad asks what's wrong with him. The system starts showing that girl's data. Her name is Zhu Liu. The system informs him that with the help of the licking dog system, if the woman's favorability towards the host exceeds 95 points, the counterattack will be successful and her identity will be transformed into the host's licking dog. Now he realizes that the dog licking money worth 90 billion can only be used to spend on women. He has also been told that when the opponent becomes the host's dog, one-tenth of the amount spent will be rewarded to the host's account and become the host's personal property. The host can also get other regards. Chen decides to use it on the girl in front of him. He smiles and tells her not to be mad at him. He will pay for her meal today. The system bounds their dog licking relationship successfully. His mission is to counterattack Zhu. The reward for completing the task is 10% dog licking gold and 5 strength points. These strengthening points can strengthen the host's physical attributes, including physical fitness, mental strength, and agility. Zhu Liu is the flower of the art department. She is powerful, and once, she made a man spend 30,000 yuan on her with just three words. Zhu smirked at him and asked if he wanted to play rich and flirt with her. The people around them look at Chen and think he is in trouble. Chen smiles and says she will know if he is good if she tries it. She says she wants to treat all her classmates in the canteen to snacks today and asks him to help her pay for them. She thinks he is dressed like a beggar and is still trying to flirt with her. She will let him know what it means to be embarrassed. But she is stunned when he transfers 50,000 yuan to her account. People around him are shocked as well. They think that this guy looks like a loser, but he is a hidden rich kid. 
Chen says that 50,000 is not much for him. He smiles and asks her if he can add her on WeChat. Zhu is still awestruck and wonders if that guy is a rich second generation, so she decides to play along. She tells him not to worry and that it is not impossible to add WeChat, but he has to come with her to a place. Chen is getting sweaty as no girl has come so close to him before. She takes him to the brand store. She tells him that she is not a gold digger. She just wants to see his sincerity and attitude. He tells her that it is not a problem. She can take whatever she wants. He wants to let her experiment with the dog licking system. Inside the store, he hears a familiar voice. He looks in that direction and sees Shudung there shopping the luxury bags. He is sad to see her there. Zhu gets that the girl is his ex-girlfriend. She blinks at him and says she has come at the wrong time. He smiles and says she has come at the right time. Zhu goes to the counter and asks the girl there if they still have that bag from the spring sales at their store. The shopkeeper lady replies that there's only one piece left, but the lady over there is trying it out. Shudan looks at Chen and says she cannot believe such a broke has brought a girl into this store. She decides to show him the difference between a loser and a junkie. She tells her boyfriend that her birthday is coming. He irritatingly asks her if she didn't celebrate her birthday last month. She tells him that it was a birthday based on the lunar calendar, and people still have birthdays based on the solar calendar. Her boyfriend tells her that he does not like materialistic girls. He asks her if she is with him because of his money. She gets his meaning and gets scared. Zhu takes the bag off Shudan's shoulder and says she will take it if she is not buying it. Chen pays the bill. With that, Zhu's favorability increases to him up to 60 points. He smiles, thinking that that is the power of money. A bag increased her 60 points favorability towards him. At this rate, Zhu will reach the threshold if she buys a few more bags. Then he thinks the amount of money he gets back is too small. Those two store attendants whispered that they did not understand why some people seemed rich and stingy with their girlfriends, while others seemed ordinary and spent tens of thousands of dollars without blinking an eye. That's why the store manager taught them not to look at people through tinted glasses and that they cannot judge spending power based on appearances alone. Shudong is feeling insulted. Zhu makes her jealous and says that a bag is like a boyfriend. It is always better to grab it. Then she looks at Chen and thinks she must grab this big fish. She grabs his arm, calls him hubby, and thanks him for that gift. Shadong starts shedding tears when she sees that. She pushes Chen in anger while going out of the store. She also tells him that he has gone too far. He looks at her, smirks, and thinks they still have a long way to go. The system tells him to bind the dog-licking relationship no. Two with Shadong. Her current favorability towards the host is 10%. When the heroine's favorability towards the host exceeds 95 points, the counterattack is booming, transforming the identity into the host's licking dog. The counterattack completion reward is 10% of the licking gold and 20 strengthening points. Zhu asks him if he is relieved now and if she has done an excellent job. She also asks where they are going next. He laughs and says they are going to do more shopping. She cannot be satisfied with just one bag. He enters a store, points at a dress and a bag, and tells the shopkeeper to pack everything except those two things. Zhu's favorability towards him is increasing. After that, he buys her designer perfumes and makeup. After buying so many things, she tells him it is almost enough. She cannot fit it in her rental house if she buys more. He says that it is not a problem. He will buy her a house. She feels ashamed and says it is not good. He has already spent a lot of money and is spending so much on their first meeting. Her favorability decreases to him by 5%. Chen thinks that he might have scared her. It is true. He would also feel upset if someone had to give away a multi-million dollar house just like that. He goes closer to her and says that she is a junior at the College of Fine Arts, is 21 years old, is 165 cm tall, is 49 kg, and her favorite color is black. Her favorite food is Korean food, her zodiac sign is Capricorn, her shoe size is 37, and she likes to watch horror movies but is most afraid of walking at night. 
He says he wouldn't be so abrupt if he did not like it. He tells the shopkeeper that he would like to fill their store value card for exclusive members up with 500,000. And when this lady comes to the store in the future, they will directly recommend the latest model to her. She obeys his order. He tells her that if he has scared her, she should consider this card a gift to make amends. She looked at him with affection and started blushing. He goes near her ear and whispers that if she cannot bear it, she should give herself to him. She shies and slaps him by calling him a bad boy. With that, her favorability increases to him by 30%. Even the store girls start liking him. They say that despite his humble appearance, this boy is so generous. He is also very considerate of the girls' feelings. Chen thinks that it is true, the same as flirting. The effect of the rich flirting and the loser flirting is very opposite. Zhu says he has bought her so much and asks if he does not want to buy something for himself. He replies that he has no money. She says that now it is her turn to give him a present. She thinks she cannot just ask for it if she wants to play a long game and catch big fish. She also needs to give something appropriately. She takes him to a boy's clothing store and buys him a few clothes. Then she takes him to a salon and gets him a new haircut. His whole personality changes with his new look. Zhu thinks that this guy looks so handsome when dressed up. Her favorability towards him increases more. When she looks at him with affection, he thinks that this is the first time in his life that he has to take care of himself like this. Fortunately, he does not need to spend any money. She lifts his chin with her finger and says it is not strange that she thinks they are a good match now. Then she says that she had a great time today because of him. For a few moments, she thought she was in love. She gives him a flying kiss and bids him goodbye. He checks and finds that her current favorability towards him is 68. He returns to his room. His roommates look at his new look and are shocked. They ask him what he has been doing all day and why he is dressed like this. He casually tells him he went on a date with Zhu. They say he can pull him down. He cannot even figure it out with Shudong and still wants Zhu. One of them says that Zhu is the beauty of the art department. Even if he gets dumped fourth child, he must act according to his ability. Another one puts his arm on his shoulder and tells him to take his advice that he cannot handle these girls. After a while, he gets Shedung's text that they should delete each other's numbers if he hates her. Chen knows that she wants to mess up with his mentality. If they delete each other's numbers, where can he go to increase his favorability? He will also point her to upgrade and make money. He replies that he can hate her when she has a special place in his heart. She tells him that she is being with Junkai because she is vain. Her mother is ill, and she needs 50,000 yuan in medical expenses. Chen sends 50,000 yuan to her account. She is shocked and tells her friend that she casually said to him, and he gave her money. Her friend asks who is so generous as to send a transfer of 50,000. She shows him the chat. That girl is surprised to see Chen's name and asks if she did not dump him today. Shudong wonders if she made a mistake. She decides to ask him. She asks him where he got all that money from and if he is in a relationship with Zhu. She also asks if he is some hidden rich second generation. But she gets disappointed when she gets no reply. Chen has put her contact on do not disturb mode. He thinks Shudong is too teared up while Zhu cannot act too hastily. He wonders if there is any other place where he can legally spend money on a woman. He decides to try the live streaming platform. The girl on the live stream tells her viewers there is still an hour left before she goes off the air, so if her viewers want to send the gift, they'll have to hurry. Chen looks at the comments and is amazed that she has earned a million dollars in no time. It means he has come to the right place. He presses the rocket icon and sends her money. After seeing the amount, that girl is stunned. It is not just her who is shocked. The other viewers are awestruck as well. Chen gives her another little money shattering shock. At the headquarters of that streaming application, an employee rushes to his boss and tells him that an unknown tycoon has just swiped $10 million in Zio Mir's livestream. The boss spits the water in his mouth and asks if it is not their trustee. 
Seeing this, the other streamers start sending him private messages. They think that just a few points from him are enough to cover their salary for several months. Zio Amir thinks that she is dreaming. She could not believe that someone had given her 10 million. A guy shows her a board where it is written that the boss told her to confirm that he will give her a 10% raise to get that lonely smoke. She understands the assignment. She says she will not give up her big daddy to some other sluts. She sends him a fly kiss and thanks him for the gifts. She requests him to send her a private message. She will give him eight management. But Chen has slept peacefully. The following day, his fellows check out the search engine and are surprised that some rich swiped 10 million in half an hour on the shark last night. Chen wakes up due to the noise of their discussion. While brushing his teeth, he thinks he spent so much money last night and wonders why Mir did not have any binding relationship. It means the bonding has to be in real life, and also, he wasted his money last night. He opened the app and looked at all the texts he had received the night before. He wonders if he is digging a hole in the chicken coop. His fellows are going somewhere and seem excited about it. They are in a hurry. He watches them go and asks what those three are doing without him. One of them says they are going to class. He reminds him that today is a public class. They can appreciate the goddess Zhao Yuki up close. The second one tells him he used to run faster than them and did not want to leave after class. Zhao Yuki, the campus beauty of Hunan University and vice president of the student union, is the dream of all boys. He is a pianist, a ballet principal, and a second-level athlete. Her outstanding talents and superb looks make her so difficult to approach. Chen is sitting in one of the rows in the student hall. Some girls look at him and say that guy is so handsome. They wonder who he is as they have never seen him before. Chen thinks a beautiful woman at Lakeside stands apart from the rest of the world. For three years, no one has been able to reach the top of this lonely peak. It must be worth a lot of money if it is hard to track down. Sharang and her fellow are also sitting some rows behind Chen. Her fellow looks at him and asks if he is Chen. She says she has not seen him so handsome in a few days. She asks Sharang if he has dressed up, especially for her. Sharang says that it should be correct, but she has Junkai now. Her heart is in turmoil in case they get into a fight. Her favorability is continuously increasing for Chen. Chen looks at her with a side eye and thinks he just changed his clothes and she is getting favorability. He says that she is such a shallow woman. But right now he has to focus on how to bind Zhao Yuki. Suddenly, he hears a guy asking his boss to show them how to conquer Zhao. Their boss is bragging that he will show them how he got her to fall in love with him. That gut goes to her and asks her for her WeChat account. She is surprised by his nonsense but says nothing. Her roommate Wu Xiaofi asks that guy what he wants to do with that. That overconfident brat tells him to add them on WeChat so they can get to know each other. Wu grabs that guy by his shirt, pulls him closer, and asks if he is looking for his death. He threatens him by the tip of a ballpoint. That guy gets scared and says there is a misunderstanding. He just wants to join the student union. Zhao is the vice president, so he wants to ask for advice. Then that guy starts crying. Wu tells him he is a wimp with no good excuse for picking up girls. That guy runs away from there. Wu looks at Zhao with anger. Chen comes there and says he also wants to add her on WeChat. He shows her phone and asks her to add him. The students are enjoying the incidents today. They say that Chen is so brave. He is giving his face to others to step on. Wu says this guy is more handsome than the last one and asks if he wants to join the student union too. Chen replies that he is not interested in the student union. Wu asks why he wants Zhao's WeChat. He replies that he wants to chase her. She starts blushing over his words. The whole crowd is awestruck and calls him a fierce guy. They think this confident gut will cry when she rejects it, but Zhao agrees to share the WeChat. Shudong's friend asks her if he is not her fish. Shudong is furious to see Chen doing this. Chen thinks everyone loves beauty, so there is no need to hide it. He says that sometimes the simplest means the most effective. No woman does not like to be chased. 
the system has successfully bound the dog-licking relationship of those two, but her current favorability is zero. After the class, when they leave university, his friends tell him he is so good today. He got Zhao Yuki's WeChat. He has changed so much recently, and he looks like a dog. One of them asks Chen if he can ask Zhao to introduce some of her friends to them. He replies that he does not have a single horoscope. She is the school beauty, and he is nothing. He tells his friends that they are exaggerating. Suddenly, someone tells him he is a loser with a sense of self-awareness. It is the guy who Wu threatened. He tells Chen that he is wise. Chen tells him that he is the one who is more professional and he will learn from him. That guy gets furious and asks Chen what he is talking about. He calls him a blind cat running into a dead rat. He tells him not to be so proud. Suddenly, Zhu comes there and says Chen is so slow. She has been waiting for him for a long time. The boys standing around are shocked to see Zhu talking to him. Chen replies that he will be damned if he is going to keep a girl waiting for so long. He asks her to allow him to buy her dinner and make amends. She likes his words and asks if she is looking good in the clothes he bought for her. He replies that those clothes were made for her and that the bag looks best when she carries it. He keeps praising her and they walk away while talking. The crowd watches them go away together. That guy from earlier starts crying and wonders why he is one step behind. Shudong is crying with tears and wonders who Zhu thinks she is. It was Shudong who came first. Zhu and Chen go to a restaurant. There, she gives him a portrait of himself. She says that she stayed up all night to draw this. She also threatens him that she cannot spare her if he dares to throw her away casually. Chen is surprised and thinks this is the first time since birth he has ever received a gift from a girl. Zhu smiles and asks him if he likes it. He wonders if this is a bait that she has prepared for him. She planned to trap him from the moment he spent money on her. He smirks and thinks it is a shame he is not the person he used to be. Zhu looks at him and thinks he does not seem very happy. It means he did not like her gift. Chen asks her why she is giving that portrait to him. He says that she made it by staying up late for him. He takes it from her hands, looks into her eyes, and asks her how she should be responsible to him if she does not receive such a good gift in the future. She yells that he scared her and asks him to return her painting. He says he wants to collect and use it as a family heirloom. He grabs her hand, pulls her closer, and says he likes her better in person than in her gifts. She starts blushing and thinks Chen is an expert in flirting. Her favorability also increases by five points. Seeing this, he thinks that if she wants him to be her dog, she should be a good toolman and blow up the gold. Suddenly, someone comes in between them and pushes them away. That guy is almost crying and his nose is running as well. He asks her if she did not say she is getting her nails done with her girlfriends and who that guy is. He says she is so good at getting her nails done that she can hug each other. He points at Chen and says he must be wealthy. Therefore she even hugs him. He adds that he has been chasing her for so long, and she will not even let him touch her hand. Chen looks at that kid and thinks this unlucky kid must be Zhu's licking dog. Chen is too familiar with this kind of treatment. Zhu asks that kid who he thinks he is to her. She says it is none of his business whether she falls in love. Suddenly, Chen comes in between them and introduces himself. Then he asks the name of the guy standing before him and how long he has been chasing Zhu. That guy replies that his name is Wang Yu, and he is from the Department of Fine Arts. He has been chasing after Zhu for half a year. Chen behaves coolly and tells that guy that he chased a girl for three years. He worked four odd jobs and ate steamed buns and pickles every day. But she finally chose to sit in someone else's Mercedes Benz. He tells him that those who have turned their backs on them will be their motivation for self-improvement. A real man should focus on getting a wife. He tells him to return to his dormitory, forget about her, work hard, make a name for himself, and make her regret her choice. That guy gets motivated and even starts crying. Zhu wonders what they are talking about as Wang starts crying. He calls Chen and tells him that he is just her friend. 
Chen replies that he does not care about her past, but he feels like she does not respect him very much, nor does she respect herself. He tears that painting in front of her. He says she can still use yesterday's card, but they will not meet until she gets her relationship in order. He leaves her there and leaves the cafe. He laughs devilishly and thinks he wants to see how she will cope. She starts shedding tears standing there and thinks this is the first time someone is tolerating her like this. She thinks he likes her, but she screwed up things. Her favorability increased again by five points. While walking on the campus in the evening, he thinks that women cannot just hold it in their hands and give it a shot if they have nothing to do. He looks at his phone and says Zhu's side has finished pushing the second tower. It is time to switch lines to Zhao Yuki. He checks her profile and finds Zhao is broadcasting and she is an anchor as well. Zhao is sitting in front of a piano and greets everyone online. She tells them she is a trainee who has been live broadcasting for two and a half days. Her specialties are singing, dancing and piano. She requests others to take care of her. Chen thinks it is pretty cute and wonders if President Zhao may be cold on the outside but hot on the inside. He looks at the money she generated and thinks it is too low. Suddenly he gets a text from Zio Mir. He asks her who she is. She reminds him that he gave her a bunch of rockets yesterday. He asks her if she is free for a meetup. She replies that he also wants to meet, but her schedule is packed. He tells her never to mind it then. She thinks he has gone mad and says she will do a special dance for him tonight. He is furious that she still wants to trick him into swiping gifts. He does not even have a binding judgment for $10 million. He could give it to President Zhao. Suddenly Zhao gets a notification that someone wants to PK with her. Chen is also glad to see that. It will be fun to watch. Zio Mir tells her viewers that she is matched with a new girl. It looks like she is sure to win. Chen also watches the match and says it will be hard to tell who wins until the end. It is a strange fate that the two of them match together. Zio Mir tells Zhao to take a break. She says that her hand is broken, but Zio has the backing of a wealthy man. She is sure that she will convince this smoky guy with her fish farming skills. Till now, she has gathered more gifts than Zhao. However, she soon becomes shocked when she sees that the smoky guy has sent multiple rockets to Zhao instead of her. Zhou is surprised as well. Zio Mir is now worried as she did not get support from the guy she was getting support from. She has been told that her boss demands an explanation of what happened. Zio Mir gets disappointed and apologizes to her viewers by saying she has something to do. Therefore, she is going to go off the air now. Chen smiles and says he can give her a gift. He could also gift someone else. She wanted to pin him down with a smile. He looks at President Zhao's livestream and says he has spent much money on her, so she should not let him down. At the headquarters of the shark application, an employee runs toward the boss to tell him about the big event that just happened. He tells him that the lonely smoke gifted another 10 million. The boss wonders if that guy is a crown prince in the Middle East. Wu tells Zhao that her broadcast has been trending today. He tells her that she will be popular soon and may become an internet celebrity. She is surprised but does not want to be an internet celebrity. She says that trying to please men online is not a long-term solution. The most important thing for a woman is to have a career in financial and personal independence. Wu tells her to stop lecturing him. He asks her to tell the truth if she knows the guy who gave her the gift. She replies that she has often told him that she does not know who he is. She gets irritated by his question. Wu apologizes to her and says he is just curious. Zhao says he has sent him so many gifts, so she should send him a private message to thank him. Suddenly she makes a scream. Wu asks him what happened to her. Zhao shows him her phone and says she may know that rich man, he is Chen Yuan. Zaho thinks that Chen is the son of a plutocrat. He has been well dressed and well fed since childhood, but he has a low key nature and always pretends to live an ordinary life. Having received an elite education, he was fed up with the gazes of others and just wanted to live freely. One day he meets the girl he loves and bravely pursues her as a commoner. Zhao thinks this must be Chen's story. 
Wu asks her if she is reading too many novels these days. She does not care what Wu thinks and says Chen has lived well since childhood, so pretending to be ordinary must be challenging. Now she has to thank him sincerely. Chen comes back after taking a shower and sees Zhao's text. She invites him to dinner tomorrow and says she will wait for him at the school gate. Chen thinks that she did not ask him where he got the money for the gift, but simply invited him to dinner. He wants to see what she is up to. The next evening, he reaches the school gate on an electric bike. He stops near a luxury car. The middle-aged man with a cigar outside that luxury car asks Chen if he is waiting for someone. He replies yes and asks if he is waiting for someone too. He replies that he came here to pick up his goddess. Zhao appears on the road. Chen looks at him and stuns. That uncle tells Chen not to look at her. He says Chen must work hard to earn money, or uncles like him will pick up all these beauties. Zhao looks at Chen and sits on his bike behind him. That uncle is shocked to see that beauty choosing that guy's bike over his luxury car. He sits on his knees and cries, asking what the purpose of making so much money is. Zhao feels like riding a heavy bike and sitting with her husband after marriage. They have arrived at a local restaurant. Chen parks his bike outside. Their orders of spicy and garlic are served. Chen starts serving her food. She adores his manner, thinking he forgot to be a gentleman even in a simple stall. It is the style of a noble family. Chen passes her the hand glove box. She smiles and thinks he treats people with a sense of property a little more, and they will be attentive. A little less, and they will be cold. He is a very disciplined family man. Chen wears a glove and starts eating lobsters with his hands. She looks at him and thinks this must be the most undersized lobster he has ever eaten. She thinks that if he is so rich and he eats with her, he does not want her to be stressed out. She thinks he is such a soft, gentle flower of the highlands. Her favorability towards him increases by 10 points. Surprised by this sudden increase, the lobster falls out of his hand. She picks up a lobster and feeds him with her hands. She blushes and says she will peel the shrimp for him. He is amazed and starts liking her generosity. When she is feeding him, Shudong and her boyfriend enter the restaurant. She is shocked to see Zhao feeding Chen shrimp. She is worried and thinks first it was Zhu Liu and now Zhao Yuki. She wonders how he could be so capable. She tells her boyfriend Junkai that there are too many people here and asks if they can go somewhere less crowded. He grabs her and says he thinks there are a lot of acquaintances. He tells her that he is a person who likes to eat in crowded places. He goes to Chen's table and throws some money at him. He tells Chen to take these 500 bucks and give him his seat. Chen looks at the currency notes fallen there and wonders what Jian Kai is doing, and if he thinks he looks good like that, Junkai throws more notes and asks him if these are enough. Before Chen shows any reaction, Zhao stands up in anger. He thinks that he was provoked and wonders why she is so angry. Zhao angrily thinks about what that dog thinks of himself that he dared to mess up her perfect date. Seeing all that money, a guy comes there and tells Junkai to give that money to him, and he will give his table to Junkai. Junkai grabs him by the shirt and angrily says he wants this table. Suddenly, he gets hit by a purse and one of his teeth breaks. It was Zhao, and Chen was stunned to see her being this brave. At that very moment, a vast woman appears on the scene and tells Junkai that he eats her food, wears her clothes, drives her car, and asks how he dares to use her money to pick up girls. That woman looks furious. Chen looks at her and is scared to his death. Junkai, who just got hit by Zhao, grabs his face with one hand and asks why Zio King what she is doing here. She thunders and asks if she had not been here how she would have discovered that he was having fun with women behind her back. She says Junkai is a beast worse than a pig or a dog. Junkai tries to play innocent and says she has got it all wrong. He asks how he could have a woman. He says that she has given him everything. There is no way he could betray her. He grabs Shudong by her hair, pulls her, and says it was her. She seduced him. Shudong cries and says that Junkai is lying. He asked her first and also said that he was single. He slaps her on her face and tells her to shut up. 
Shadung looks at him with tears in her eyes. He again raises a hand at her and tells her to lower her gaze. Chen grabs his wrist and stops him there. He asks Jiang Kai if he does not feel ashamed of himself while hitting a woman. Shadung cannot believe that Chen took a stand for her. She thinks he still loves her. Her favorability for him increases and reaches the target point. The system informs him that Lin Shudung, the dog-licking partner no. 2, has a favorability score 95 for the host. It congratulates the host for a successful counterattack. Dog-licking target 2 spent 50,000 yuan on dog-licking gold and rewarded the host 5,000 yuan. Lin Shudung is transferred into a licking dog. The host is rewarded with 20 enhancement points as well. With those points, his strength and agility increase. Chen bends Junkai's arm. Junkai gets hurt and asks him to let him off. He lifts a bottle from a table and tries to hit Chen with it. But he breaks the bottle and Junkai's nose with one punch. Chen tells him that there is no shame in eating soft food, but he is a beast who eats soft food and beats women properly. Junkai feels insulted and brings out a knife from his pocket. Zhao tells Chen to watch out. Chen speedily grabs his wrist and releases the knife from his grip. Then he lifts him and throws him. Junkai passes out. The crowd there gathers around to see the fight. Chen starts walking outside. Shudung looks at him and rushes toward him. She grabs his leg and says she was wrong and blind. She asks him for a chance to start over. He asks her if Chen, whom she is talking to, is the person who once carried her over 10 kilometers to the emergency room at 3 a.m. Is he still the same Chen who saved up for half a year to buy her a cell phone only to be criticized for not being the latest model? Is it Chen who knows she is frivolous and vain, but always believes she will look back one day? He tells her that the old Chen is already dead, she chose it herself, then he leaves her there crying. Chen drops Zhao at her hostel. He apologizes to President Zhao for the mess tonight. She replies that calling the president is too rude. He should just call her Kiki. She adds that she did not feel disturbed, but she got to see a different side of someone. She thinks that Chen is a person who is more and more impressive the more someone looks at him. He has a hunch that he will bring her countless surprises. Shudong enters her room while crying. Her friend asks her why she has not brought an umbrella as it is showering so hard outside. Shadong just calls Chen Yuan's name and says nothing else. Her friend thinks that she has heard that Chen swiped over 10 million for Zhao's live broadcast yesterday. She says this kid looks like a beggar, but is so rich. Shadong is shocked to hear that and asks her where she heard that news. She replies that Wu Ziaofai Zhao's dorm roommate said it, which is all over the women's dormitory. She thought Shudong knew. Shudong starts screaming after hearing everything. Chen is playing a video game. His friend asks him if he is outrageous. He has won 18 times in a row tonight. They ask him if he is a gaming genius. Chen thinks that he did not expect that after adding 20 attributes, even playing games would become more accessible. This is a surprise. He replies to his friends that he is in good condition. One of his friends asks him why he does not become an anchor. He says that when Chen makes one million a month, he can fly with him. Chen removes his shirt and looks at himself in the washroom's mirror. He thinks the attribute points have made qualitative changes in his body and are in better shape. He focuses his jawline and says that calling himself Peng Yuyin of Hunan University should not be too much. He looks at his abs and says that with such a perfect body, he does not know which woman would be cheapened. Suddenly, his friend calls him and asks if he has fallen into the toilet hole. He tells him that the phone is ringing continuously. He comes out and checks his phone and wonders why Zhu Liel is calling him so late. He wonders if she is thinking of some new tricks to trick him. He calls her and asks her why she called him so late. She is crying on the other side. She tells him that she does not know what to do. She could only think of him. She asks him if he can give her half a million. She explains that her dad owes a lot of money because of gambling. The family that was initially relatively wealthy has plummeted and they have to deal with loan sharking daily. Zhu says she is not a very materialistic girl but has to pay off her debts. 
Chen asks her to give her card number. He instantly sends her money. She is shocked to see the figure as it is 5 million instead of half a million. She asks him why it is 5 million. He replies that it is okay. He accidentally hit an extra zero. Her favorability increases towards him multiple times. She thanks him for helping him and says she will repay him. Zhu's current favorability score is 94. Chen wonders why it is still 94 and if his sudden help did not win her heart. He wonders if she wants to confess her feelings. Then he thinks that it might not be the case. The person who reveals his neediness first is often at a disadvantage. Whoever confesses first will lose. The next day when Chen is outside the cafeteria with his fellows, Shudan comes there and tells him that she has brought him a bun from the cafeteria. She invites him to go to the classroom together. His friends are stunned to see her bringing breakfast for him. Suddenly, Zhu comes there too and says she has brought him breakfast. She guesses he is tired of eating in the cafeteria. That's why she made him seafood porridge. Both girls look at each other with hate in their eyes. Suddenly, someone else calls Chen at the same time. Now his friends wonder who is the third candidate. It's Yao. She says she has brought him beef noodles. Shudong and Zhu wonder why Zhao is there. It's like a boxing match between those three inside a ring. Her strong sense of oppression fears those two. They think that is the power of being number two on the school's beauty list. Chen asks Zhao how she knows that he likes to eat beef noodles. She says she just assumed he likes spicy food when they ate crayfish yesterday and she knows a great place that serves it. He replies that it feels so good to be cared about by others. He thanks Kiki. He thinks that he expected this from Zhao. She could gauge his taste through the details and one without making a sound. Zhao welcomes him and says of course giving breakfast is a priority. She adds that if one does not care for the other party's liking, how can they say they like them? Shudong and Zhu are annoyed to hear that. It feels like she has punched them very severely. Zhao gives him a gift and says it is to express her gratitude. Chen asks if it is the newly released EQ N15 Pro Max. Chen's friends are shocked to see him getting the latest mobile phone model as a gift. Seeing him receive the gifts makes them feel worse than the death of their fathers. Even Shudong and Zhu are surprised to see her willingness towards him as that phone is more than 10,000 yuan. This feels like she has knocked them in a single move. Chen tells her she does not need to spend so much on him. She replies that he has spent more on her. She does not have much money. It is a favor to him. He says that he will accept it then. They both walk away, leaving others standing there. Shudong says she wants Chen back and wonders why it is so hard. She is sad because it has only been a few days and another girl has appeared. Zhu comes to him and tells Shudong to find a place to chat. Shudong asks what she is talking about. She has nothing to discuss with her. She adds that it is all Zhu's fault. Zhu says that she wants to talk about forming alliances. Shudong startles and asks what kind of alliance. She replies that it is an alliance against their common enemy, Zhao Yuki. Chen checks the mobile features. It is hard to believe that she gave him such an expensive mobile phone, which costs more than 10,000 yuan. Zhao asks him if he is okay and if something is wrong with the phone. He smiles and says everything is fine and the phone is handy. Her current favorability is 40. Chen thinks he would have already believed she loves him if he had not seen her favorability. She is indeed worthy of being the goddess. She is more skillful in making the hunter think she is the hunter. He has to find a way to push forward the progress as soon as possible. When he is busy thinking about this, his phone beeps. It is a text from Zio Mir. She tells him that the last time she said she could not meet, it was not like she could not do it. She is a little bit afraid of society. But it does not mean she does not want to meet Smokey. He looks at the message, laughs and wonders what kind of attitude this is. He also wonders if she thinks him a fool. At the same time he gets a notification that Dragon King wants him to join a group where all the anchors are ranked. He wonders if this is the legendary Big Daddy group of anchors. He joins the group and starts chatting with the other members. He gets that these rich guys want to try his skills, so he plays with them. One of them says that Mr. Pun Smokey seems rich. 
Tens of millions are just a tiny amount of money for him. He asks him if he wants to do business with him. That guy adds him for a private chat. Here he tells him that he has a villa he plans to sell, but he does not know if Mr. Ge's Smokey is interested in it. Chen asks him about the location. He replies that it is located in Jonku District, a Riverview Villa. Chen searches the location on maps and is stunned to see that Jonku District is a well-known wealthy area. A villa costs at least tens of millions. He replies that he has just planned to buy a villa to store some sundries. He will go to see the house tomorrow. The guy on the other side of the phone is shocked to see his reply. He says that this guy seems to be planning to buy it. He wonders if they guessed wrong. He tells Dragon King that Mr. Ken Smokey is not a shill. He is rich. Dragon King is taking tea. He replies that whether he is rich or fake, they will know when the time comes. Even if they guess wrong, there will be many benefits if they can make friends who will not frown, even if they throw tens of millions of dollars at others. He tells the other guy to send Mr. T Smokey their address and learn more about him. Chen receives the address. He wonders how much her favorability will increase if he gives her a villa. Chen brings Zhao to that location with him. She asks him why he has brought her here so mysteriously. The owner is waiting for him outside. He waves at Mr. Pori's Smokey. He thinks that Smokey looks ordinary, but he is accompanied by a woman who is a natural beauty. He wonders if he may be the son of a hidden family. It seems to him that the price today is challenging to negotiate. He forwards his hand for a handshake and says his name is Hong Yuan Kiao. He has a small business, but recently he had to sell this villa due to financial problems. He welcomes those two inside the villa. He tells them to have a look. He says the entire villa has a construction area of 500 square meters. The usable area is 2000 square meters. Famous designers designed the decoration and the whole house was customized with imported Italian furniture. He shows them the view from the balcony and says that the river is surging and dragons and tigers are roosting. The feng shui is excellent. He would have wanted to bury himself here if he were not short of money. Zhao wonders if Chen is buying a house. She thinks this mansion must cost tens of millions of dollars. Chen says that this place is good. He tells him not to waste his time and quickly tells the price. Hong tells him that he will not lie. Although he needs money, before he came here, several people were very interested in this place. He thinks that his psychological price for this house is 50 million, so he has to leave some room for bargaining so that he will quote a higher price. He tells Smokey that he will give him an average 60 million dollar price. Chen sighs before saying something. Hong wonders if he has overstated it. He thinks that it is hard to fool a nobleman's son. Chen acts as if 60 million is nothing for him and agrees to pay. Hong is shocked to hear him. He is now repenting and thinks he should have asked 80 million. Chen asks Zhao if they should buy this house. She asks why he is asking her. She does not care if he buys it or not. He replies that he is buying it for her. Hong thinks giving 60 million to others is a massive amount of financial resources and courage. He is shocked because the price he quoted did not offend Smokey. Zhao is stunned and thinks no matter how rich and generous Chen Yuan is, he should have some restraint. This is too exaggerated. She wonders if this is some kind of main nortal trap and if he will trick her into drinking talking water later. She replies that it does not sound great. She cannot accept it. He grabs her hand and says the property restriction policy has been implemented recently. He owns too many properties. Therefore he is thinking of transferring one to her name. He also hopes to give her a home. She starts blushing. She wonders if this kind of money transfer is typically allowed for legally married couples. She wonders if he treats her like her future wife. Chen asks her what their relationship matters and if it is not, what his and hers are. There is no need for distinctions. She starts blushing more, and her favorability rapidly increases for him and reaches 90 points. Chen thinks his acting skills are improving, and the film industry owes him an Oscar. Chen paid the initial deposit of 10 million and said he would transfer the remaining money to Hong after completing the formalities and transfer. 
Hong replies that it is okay. Chen can leave the transfer matters to Hong. It will be sorted out in the next few days. They sit in the taxi. Hong waves them goodbye. Hong thinks that with Smokey's wealth, it is surprising that he still insists on taking a taxi daily for physical exercise. It is like going incognito, proving that the wealthier he is, the more low-key he becomes. While sitting in the taxi, Chen thinks President Zhao's favorability is already 90 points. Once he completes the Licking Dog transformation, the 70 million invested in her will turn into 700 million in returns. With the addition of attribute point rewards, this is a hefty profit. Zhao looks at him and thinks that based on her experience reading novels, if Chen Yuan just said something embarrassing, the next part will likely be their wedding. She wonders if the wedding will be in Milan or the Alps and what name suits their child. She wakes from her daydreams when the driver tells them they have arrived. She exits the taxi and asks Chen if he is not leaving the car. He replies that his roommates have invited him to play games at the internet cafe. He bids her goodbye and leaves. She becomes sad and says it should not be like this. She wanted to confess. Chen arrives at the internet cafe. He looks at his friends, who are already playing. They ask him why he took so long to come. They tell him to hurry up and go open a card. They have saved this machine for him. He tells them not to worry. He will drive the machine to take them flying. He goes to the counter and asks them to open a 20 yuan card, four packs of liquid cigarettes, and four bottles of iced black tea. It's Zhu on the counter. She calls Chen, who is looking at his phone. Hearing her voice, he looks at her and asks her what she is doing here. She blushes and says she told him earlier that her dad runs a chain of internet cafes and opened this internet cafe. Thanks to him, her family's debt has been completely paid off. She excitedly says she will give him a lifetime membership for the internet cafe. He can use unlimited computers. He replies that it is not necessary, but she still does it. Suddenly, a gangster asks Zhu if she is Lao's daughter. He also asks when her father will repay the money he owes them. She replies that she paid him 5 million last time and asks why she still needs to pay him back. That guy smacks his bat on the counter and says 5 million is the principal, and there is also interest. The interest is still 15 million short. She yells at him that he is thoroughly engaging in fraud. It is robbery. He grabs her and tells her to stop talking nonsense. If she cannot come up with 15 million today, she will come with them. With her looks, she would be the star of his nightclub. She will easily earn enough to cover the 15 million debt in one or two years. Seeing him crossing the line, Chen grabs his arm and twists it. He warns them and says they better leave quickly when he is not angry. That dog is angry and says it is meddling with the mouse. He asks his men to kill him. All the other gangsters attack him simultaneously. Chen kicks them. His friends are shocked to see the blind monk's ultimate move, the cyclone kick. They say that Yuan has improved his fighting skills recently. Those gangsters leave the cafe saying Chen should consider himself lucky today, but not let them into him again. Zhu hugs him and thanks him for saving her again. She was scared to death just now. Chen gets the notification that Zhu Liel's favorability has reached 95 points. It congratulates him for the successful counterattack. It says that the dog licking target no. One spent 5-3 million yuan in dog licking gold and rewarded the host with 530,000 yuan. He also gets 5 bonus points. Chen thinks that today is a double delight. Suddenly, Shuang comes there and sees Zhu hugging Chen. She calls her treacherous. She points at Zhu and tells Chen that they agreed to ally. Yet she is, hiding and seducing Chen Yuan, enjoying the benefits alone. Chen gets embarrassed to see them fighting and tells the system to add all the points to strengthening and agility. The next day, students are wandering in the sports field. Chen is also there. He thinks Lin Shutong and Zhu Liel have been successfully wooed, so dealing with President Zhao is just a piece of cake. It is time to find new targets, or else he might end up in a situation where no one is left to charm. Suddenly, a girl taps his back to call him and asks him if he can move to the side because he is causing inconvenience to others. 
She says their sports club has requisitioned the sports field for a short distance race. She asks him if he could make way and avoid the area. He looks at her closely and thinks that even though this girl seems a bit fierce, she is pretty straightforward and genuine. He tells her that he can do that. Then he showed her his phone and requested her to share her WeChat ID so he could add her there. Suddenly someone comes there and asks him what he is doing. That guy says he is her boyfriend and tells Chen to get rid of this idea as soon as possible. Chen thinks that he has seen this guy somewhere before. Then he remembers that this guy used to beat him in the past. That guy calls Chen a toad who is dreaming of eating swan meat. He tells him to give up that unrealistic hope and face reality. Chen thinks that it is a narrow road between enemies. The system binds that girl in the dog-licking relationship. She is Hijining, and her current favorability towards the host is 5. If he succeeds with this target, with the reward of 10% of dog licking gold, he will get an additional 22 enhancement points. Chen thinks that this target is attractive. The referee asks the players to get ready as the competition is about to begin. That guy also comes to the starting line. Ying roots for her boyfriend. The players take their positions. The referee gives the signal. That guy is running faster than other players and maintaining the first spot. He thinks the other players are a bunch of ants. Suddenly, a player crosses him. That guy is shocked and says someone can't be this fast. It is Chen who leaves that guy behind. He thinks that he will defeat Lai Yang in his strongest field. Yang thinks that he cannot be underestimated. He laughs and says that although he does not know who he is, he will show him what it means to be a great emperor. But then he looks around and wonders where he has gone. Chen appears on his left, and he is still running. Ying is shocked that Chen has lapped him by a whole round. He wonders how many seconds it was. Chen smirked and thought that with just a mere decade of hard training, Ling could compare to his meticulously planned skill points over a whole week. The anchor says that they witnessed something extraordinary. The real speedster has emerged in the face of his speed, even the iron arm Adam bows down in awe. The whole crowd shouts for him. In just 50 short seconds, he has already circled the field once. Chen wins the race. Jining could not believe that her boyfriend had lost. The anchor says that a new champion is born. He has broken records, surpassing even the limits of human intellect. But they still know nothing about him. He is not even a competing athlete. The coach comes to Chen and says that Chen has extraordinary abilities. He says that if he is interested in joining the track and field team, he recommends joining the national team. Ling starts crying and asks the coach if that spot wasn't meant for him. Jiming looked at him and wondered why she did not feel bad about that guy. Her favorability increases for him by 5 points. Suddenly, Ling calls him and asks what's wrong with her as her thoughts seem somewhere else. She smiles to cover up and says she is just a little worried about him. Meanwhile, her favorability keeps increasing for Chen. Zhao enters the room. Wu asks her where she has been. She tells him that Chen bought her a house. Wu is shocked to hear this news. She replies that it is right. She went to see a house with him today. She tells him that Chen bought that house for 60 million. She asks him to help her check the house prices in Jiangku district. She says that if that chubby guy selling the house plays dirty, she will not spare his life. Chen told her that what belongs to him also belongs to her. Wu thinks that sometimes luck favors the naive. He wonders why he cannot encounter such good fortune. He is feeling jealous of her. Wu tells her not to show off. He will help her with this. Suddenly he sees something on the phone and yells, what is this? Someone has posted an article about Chen that he is a top-tier scumbag, juggling multiple relationships at the same time at 21st level. Chen's roommate shows him that article on the internet and makes fun of him. Chen is angry. He thinks that the writer of this article is kidding with him. He is obviously a money-splitting boy. It seems like he has been relatively high-profile lately. Someone might not be happy about it. He wonders who that person could be. Three nerds are behind this scene. The one with the glasses tells the others that their article was pushed to the top of the list. The post has gone viral. 
His fellow laughs and says now Chen's reputation is over. Suddenly, LNG comes to them and asks what those three are doing by drawing the curtains and turning off the lights in broad daylight. Firstly, those three get scared by his sudden appearance. They look at him and say he is so scary as he always walks silently. The main culprit tells Ying that there is a guy named Chen Yuan in the School of Liberal Arts. He is very arrogant recently. They are dealing with him. Ying looks at Chen's picture and wonders if he is not the guy from the sprint race. He suddenly realizes that he is the same Chen that he used to beat up in high school. He laughs and tells those three that he knows him. They went to the same high school. Chen has been a sociopath since childhood. He has quite a bit of information about him. Ling says that Chen is probably not worthy of being a good guy. He persistently clings to girls and harasses them. Those three start welcoming Ying to get more information about Chen so they can add more to their already gone viral article. Ling wants revenge as well. He smirks and thinks it does not matter if Chen wins the game and the coach likes him. Ling wants him to be ruined. They update the post and write that Chen rides on many boats, objectifies women, and frequently puas and dwarfs them. They advise all the women to be aware of this well-dressed beast. They also mention that those women already in a relationship with him do not do so voluntarily. The article also mentions that an insider has told them that Chen Yuan had the reputation of being a three-headed dog from high school. He can be called the best licking dog among all licking dogs. The article spreads like a fire in the jungle. Everyone is shocked to read so much about Chen Yuan. Even the principal of the university reads it. He smashes the phone on the table in anger and says that is too much and is simply unreasonable. He adds that he will allow such a black sheep to appear in his school. He will personally investigate and find out. If it is true, he will expel this scum among students. Zhao tells the investigation team that Chen Yuan from Huda College of Liberal Arts is an exceptional person. What he hates the most is girls' suffering. He comes from a famous family and possesses extraordinary wealth, yet he is generous and willing to help others, hoping to alleviate their worries and solve difficulties. He hates those who beat a woman. Whenever night falls, he transforms into a dark knight, pushing evil and striking with a heavy fist. He is powerful and mysterious, guarding this city entirely of desire and sin. Zhao says that from her perspective, Chen Yuan is a hero. Those officers ask if it is not an exaggeration to call him a hero. They ask her on what basis she draws this conclusion. She replies that she has drawn it with her woman's intuition. The principal asks his secretary if Zhao Yuki's testimony is credible. He looks at her profile and replies that she is the vice president of the student union. Although he thinks she is a bit weird, she should not lie. Chen Yuan is probably a good person. The principal orders the officers to ask Chen's classmates again. They go to Shudong, show her their ID, and say they have some questions about her classmate Chen Yuan and that they need her help in their investigation. They request her to come with them. In the investigation room, she starts crying while telling the officers that Chen Yuan is a good person. But it is a pity that she is not good enough for him. She says that she is greedy for vanity. She works day and night, but Chen Yuan is not willing to choose her. She admits that. She excuses the officers for being emotional because it makes her heartache when she thinks of him. The officer passes her another tissue and asks if she is saying she likes Chen Yuan, and he rejects it, but she still thinks he is a good person. She sobs and says she deserves it. She does not deserve to fall in love. Chen Yuan is undoubtedly a good person. He has not done anything wrong, he just does not love her. The principal also hears the testimony. After that, he leaves the room. He smokes outside and wonders if it is possible that Chen Yuan is innocent and the people on the forum are trying to smear him. Suddenly, he looks down the window and sees two people coming that way. He wonders why they are presenting a banner. He meets them and introduces himself as the president of Hunan University. He asks them what those two are looking for. Zhu Liu opens that banner and tells the principal that she is from the art department. She came today to present a banner to Chen Yuan from the Literature College, 
She adds that Chen acted brave a few days ago and helped her family a lot. The principal is shocked to hear another fan of Chen. The principal sees those two off and thinks that he has blamed Chen Yuan wrongly and he must have to look at that post again. Surprisingly, there are some videos in favor of Chen. Someone also posted a video of him winning the race. Other than that, there are many comments of the girls speaking in favor of Chen Yuan just by seeing his innocent looks. Seeing all these, the principal grabs his head in worry and wonders if this man is a popular idol. He thinks that it is just like a set of light falcons. A tall tree stands out in the forest, but the wind will break it. If a person is too good, he can easily be targeted and forced by others. The principal starts sobbing and says he can understand Chen Yuan now. He says he will surely give him justice. He will be unruly. He cannot bear this grievance. He calls all the students in the hall. He tells them that recently, there have been some rumors on the forum against Chen Yuan, a student of their school. But based on his thorough investigation, he found it to be completely a rumor. It's slander. He pulls Chen closer and says today, he is here to clear Chen's name. He adds that Chen not only has a correct lifestyle and is willing to help others, but he has even acted bravely for justice many times but kept it secret. He sobs and says Chen has a majestic personality and a noble soul. He gives him a certificate and tells others to learn from Chen Yuan and become a person who contributes positively to society. All the students applaud him. Chen wonders what is happening there and why he is given this certificate. He is getting embarrassed, wondering when he has shown courage and been willing to help others. Ling is burning to see Chen getting all those praises. He cannot understand why Chen has not been ruined this time. He thinks that everyone has gone blind. It is the Ling who should be the one standing on the stage accepting flowers and applause. Suddenly he looks at his girlfriend Jennying, who is enchanted by Chen's personality. Chen is surprised when he sees that Jiying's favorability towards him has increased by more than 10 points. The students start leaving after the ceremony ends. Ling goes to Jiying and says he has seen it all. She just enthusiastically applauded Chen Yuan. He asks her what is the meaning behind that. She asks him if he is not feeling well and why he is so jealous. She says that she only has genuine admiration for her classmate Chen Yuan. As a fellow university student, he has done many good deeds yet remains indifferent to fame and wealth. He quotes an example that after winning against Ying, he could have become a pride of the heavens, but instead, he chose to return. These comments work as oil in the fire for Ying. He grabs her wrist with force and tells her to shut up. He says that Chen cannot beat him. She starts weeping and tells him that he is hurting her. Ying has gone crazy in hatred and says Chen Yuan is just a useless dog that he stepped on. It does not matter if the coach likes him. This society values those with money and power. His dad can buy him a Tesla. He asks her what Chen Yuan has in his possession. Suddenly, Chen passes them, talking on the phone, telling Hong he can drive in. He tells him that he keeps a low profile at school and instructs him not to come to pick him up in an overly expensive car. Jinin and Ling forget about their fight and start looking at him. After a while, they see that a fancy car comes there and stops by Chen. He tells the man who brought the car that he told him not to drive such a fancy car. He scolds him softly and tells him to pay attention next time. Zhang apologizes to him and says he will from the next time. He explains that he rushed and forgot Chen does not like it too flashy. Hong opens the door for him and Chen gets in. Ling's eyes come out of the shock that he has just received. After the car leaves, Jinning tells Ling that they should break up as he does not trust her. Ling cannot believe that his girl is breaking up with him. Chen Yuan and Hong go to the office where he pays the remaining amount to Hong and he gives him the villa papers after completing all the legal procedures. Chen says that he is heading back to school. Hong offers him a lift. He refuses it by saying that his car attracts too much attention. He will take a taxi back himself. While walking on the road, he thinks that even though he has bought the house, he still needs to prioritize with President Zhao. After all, reaching full favorability earns a 25-point attribute bonus. He needs to give her something else. 
He checks his phone to see what else Hong wants to sell. He opens the group chat and sees the praises for him as he bought an expensive villa in no time. Moreover, he gifts it to his girlfriend. Chen replies that it is just a small favor he is doing. Suddenly, someone posts in the group an ad about selling a car. Chen likes the idea of him giving her a car. Chen reaches the showroom of that guy. That guy receives him in person. He introduces himself. He is Zhang Heiashen. His family runs a small business and personally, he manages a small car dealership. He says it is a pleasure to meet Mr. Smokey. He gives Chen his business card. Chen knows that the Zhang group makes cars and cargo ships. This is a large local enterprise and this guy, surnamed Zhang, is a wealthy second generation entrepreneur. He calls him brother Zhang and says that managing a large car dealership at a young age is truly impressive. Heoshin tells him not to call him brother. He cannot afford it. He tells him just to call him by his name. He says he would like to take him on a tour to see some cars. He tells Chen that he is really young and promising. When he first heard Hong say Mr. Smokey, he thought he was an uncle. But he did not expect Mr. Smokey to be so young and has such outstanding charisma. One of Zhang's secretaries asks the other who that person is whom Mr. Zhang received personally. She replies that he must be the son of some wealthy tycoon. She tells the other not to bother looking into it. This kind of man is not someone who they should be concerned about. Zhang shows him his collection. He says that he would not speak for elsewhere, but in this city, his place has the most complete collection of luxury cars. Everything he can think of is here. Chen looks around and says he wants to buy a Bugatti Chiron. These words hit Zhang like an arrow. He smiles embarrassingly and says that Chen really loves to joke. He says that Chiron is a top luxury car with a limited edition of 20 units in the world. Chen asks if he is saying that he does not have it. Chen asks if he has a Lamborghini Veneno or Pagani Huera Roadster. These words are critically hitting Zhang. He wonders if Chen is here to disrupt his place. He explains that the vehicles he usually deals with here range from 2 million to 89 million. Chen gets that he has no car that he desires. He tells him that there is nothing suitable for him here. He also mentions that Zhang's business does not seem to be that extensive. Zhang thinks that Chen can buy houses worth tens of millions, but he finds it hard to believe he can afford cars of the same value. He decides to unveil his trump card to keep the shop bustling. He tells Chen that even though he does not have the car he asked for, he does have one expensive car here. He takes the curtain off her Ferrari LaFerrari. It features a 6.3-liter V12 naturally aspirated engine capable of delivering a maximum power output of 588 kilowatts. The independent electric motor produces 120 kilowatts of power, contributing to a total output of 800 horsepower. Paired with an A7-speed dual-clutch transmission, it achieves an acceleration time of less than 3 seconds for 0 to 100 kilometers. It is available in 22.5 million yuan. Zhang asks Chen how he would respond in such a scenario. Chen thinks that while the Ferrari may not be excessively expensive, it is still not considered cheap. It would indeed be fitting as a gift for President Zhao. He puts a hand on Zhang's shoulder and says if it is over 20 million, he will buy it. He has put in effort. He tells him to take him to swipe the card. He tells him to deliver the card to Hancheng Riverside Villa Community No. 1. Zhang is shocked and takes the card from him. Suddenly, Chen gets a call from his friend Liu Wenj. He wonders why he is calling him this time. Wenj tells Chen that on his birthday, his girlfriend Liao Jia said she was accompanying her best friend to do nails. It got very late too. Liao Jia did not bring an umbrella with her. He was worried about her so he hurriedly took an umbrella to give it to her. But he witnessed a scene that tore his heart apart. She was kissing some rich guy with a car in the rain. At that moment, he has a sense of confusion. They were getting wet in the rain, while he, holding the umbrella, felt like a drowned rat. Wenj is crying tears and tells Chen that his heart hurts so much. It was a three-year relationship. He had planned to take her home to meet his parents. Chen tells him to stop drinking. He has already had eight bottles of pockery sweat. 
Wenge sobs and asks if he did something wrong and if he can still try to win her back. Chen grabs him by his shirt and scolds him. He tells him that he must stay clear-headed. The mistake is hers, not his. He tells him to pick up his self-respect and not become a licking dog. Wenge falls to his knees and says he already knows all of this, but he does not know what to do. Chen looks at his miserable friend and says it is hard to accept. He asks him if he thinks she is just impulsive and she is not a bad person. Chen needs to teach him a lesson. He brings out his phone and dials a number. Wenge asks him what he is talking about and whom he is planning to call. Chen tells Wenge to trust him and let him handle this situation. He will make Liaoji a kneel before him and repent. Chen calls Zhang Hayashin and says he wants to borrow a few cars, noting that they are too expensive, just a few million each. He also asks him if he can contact some of his trustworthy friends to have them drive the cars over tomorrow. He replies that he will handle this matter properly for him. Wenge wonders why there is a double cross involved in this. After that, Chen calls Zhu Liel and asks her if she is free tonight. He would lie to meet up with her. He tells her the address and says he will wait for her there. Wenge looks at his friend and says he seems to have changed a bit. In the evening, they meet in a restaurant. Wenge is stunned to see Zhu Liel hugging Chen so openly. She says she missed him so much. Wenge thinks that Chen made a single call and brought an 810 girl. He wonders if this is still the loyal licking dog he used to know. Chen introduces Wenge to Zhu Liel. She asks Chen if he has called her so late just to introduce friends to her. But then she wonders if he is introducing her to his circle. She starts blushing, thinking he has her in his heart. Chen replies that he wants to ask her to help him with a play tomorrow. Ma Gao is driving on the highway with Liao Jia. He tells her not to be gloomy. She will not be happy with that loser Liu Wenge. He will get her a new bag for her birthday in a few days. She replies that words are easy to say, but considering the years of relationship, Ma Gao better treat her well in the future. Suddenly, a Ferrari takes over them and applies brakes in front of his car. Ma Gao applies brakes on time and saves himself from an accident. He yells at the guy in the Ferrari and asks him if he does not know how to drive appropriately. But then he sees someone with perfect curves and shining wheels and a pair of unparalleled headlights stepping out of that red car. He becomes a fan of her beauty and says a Ferrari is nothing in front of her. Right after that, Wenge steps out of the car. He is covered in luxury brands from head to toe. Jia is shocked to see him coming out of that luxury car. Zhu Liel grabs him by his arm and says she is scared as the new car he bought for her almost got hit by this guy. Wenj is acting hesitantly and says that if it gets hit, he will buy her a new one. Ma Gu looks at Wenj and wonders how he turns out like this and if he is a hidden rich second generation. Jia looks at them and thinks for a second. She understands that they are acting. She yells at him and asks what he is trying to pretend. Wenge tries to act cool but fails. He tells Zhu Liel to get in the car as they still have a bit to go. Jia tells him she has known him for a long time and asks if he thinks she does not know about his background. She admits she is wrong, but aside from the facts, his performance today disgusts her. Zhang is in the car with Chen, listening to their conversation. He tells Chen that the woman has figured it out. Chen smiles and says it is not a problem. It is time to take the stage with his little brother. The real show is about to begin. After that, all the cars he borrowed drive towards their location. They reach there in no time and surround Ma Gao. A guy in a white suit who knows Ma Gao comes out of the car. He looks at Wenge, pretends he is an old friend, and is surprised to see him there. Ma Gao is shocked to see that guy. After that, all the other drivers come out of their cars. That guy in white named Bai walks toward Ma Gao and asks him if he recognizes him. Ma Gao starts shaking due to some fear. Bai surrounds Ma Gao and Jia and asks if that guy told her that his name is Ma Kai, his family owns a coal mine and he studies in America. Bai grabs him by the head and tells Jia that this guy is a habitual liar. He pretends to be wealthy to deceive women into bed. He is nothing more than a gigolo. 
He laughs and asks her if she actually believes he is some rich second generation. Bai says Magu's tactics are so clumsy he should have starved by now. But surprisingly, there are still naive girls falling for it. He adds that she does not even take a good look at herself. She does not even deserve to be with wealthy people. Those words fall like lightning on Jia. Jia runs to beat Ma Gao with her sandals and says he is worse than a dog and that she will kill him. Ma Gao starts crying and apologizes to her. Seeing this, Wenj tells Zhu Liu to go from there. Jia grabs him from his leg and tells him not to leave her behind. It is not that she admires vanity. She is just afraid of being poor. She asks him for another chance. But he walks away, saying she should not call him that way. He breaks up with her and tells her not to call him ever. Ma Gao finds a chance to run away. But Chen comes from the front and asks him where he is planning to slip away. He adds that letting him go is not impossible, but first, he must give himself 100 slaps. After that, they all go to a pub to celebrate. Chen thanks everyone for their strong support. The others tell him not to be so formal, as Hayashin's friends are his friends too. Bai gets closer to Chen and says he has heard Chen is a master on the Shark Live platform. He has a favor to ask Chen for help with. Chen asks what kind of favor it is, Bai says he has a favorite streamer he wants to support, but he has run out of money this month. He is wondering if Chen can help him a bit. Chen understands that they want to test his abilities again. He thinks that these wealthy folks always like to underestimate others. Zhang gets embarrassed and tells Chen that Bai is just kidding. He should not take it to heart. He tells Bai that supporting his girl is his own responsibility. It is unreasonable to expect Chen to foot the bill. Chen slams his glass on the table. The boys there think that he has gotten angry and wants to fight. But Chen unlocks his phone. He slides his phone towards Bai and says he is going to the bathroom. Bai can feel free to use his account as he likes. He tells him not to help him save money and spend it freely. Then he goes to the washroom. Bai is surprised and wonders if Chen is letting him freely use his phone to browse and if he is trusting him that much then he will really just spend freely. In the washroom, he thinks that if they ask him to pay the bill, he might actually feel a bit reluctant. He is not tired of paying for gifts since the system pays for them anyway. When he comes out of the washroom, he looks like all those guys are standing in a circle around Bai and are encouraging him to spend more. Chen comes there and asks what he is up to and what is going on with all this excitement and commotion. Bai starts sobbing and tells Chen to save the child. Chen takes his phone back and checks it. He says that he has been away for so long and Bai just spent less than 20 million. He calls him weak. All those around are awestruck and wonder what kind of identity this Chen has and if his family is richer than Tiandi and Banks. Bai takes a sigh and says on a regular day he might earn a few tens of thousands but surpassing 13 million is like brushing out several sports cars and this is tearing his heart apart. Chen says that 20 million does not sound good. He says he will round it up to a neat 60 million for him. Bai tells him not to do this. He grabs his hand to prevent him from doing this and requests him to stop as it is enough. He adds that she does not deserve so much money. Zhang asks Bai if he has realized he is not up to par. He tells them to raise a glass to boss Chen. Bai says that he genuinely surrendered. He will follow Chen's lead from now on. A girl in the bar asks other who that person is. He seems quite influential. She recognizes one with white hair. He is Bai Killin from the white real estate. The other girl says it sounds like a gathering of the elite sound generation in the top circles of Seoul. If she joins any of them, her life after that would be worry-free. Another girl asks if the one called Chen is that mysterious person who went viral for brushing a billion. She says that his life is her dream. Chen receives a text. He tells others that he has got something to attend to, so he will take off now. They will plan for another meetup next time. That text is from Zio Mare. She tells him she is in Seoul now and cannot wait to meet him. He replies that they can meet tomorrow. He laughs and says that after leaving her hanging for so long, it is time to reap a harvest of goodwill. 
Xiaomir lands at the airport the next day. She thinks that it is just a meeting as long as she exudes a little charm. Chen will end up just another catch in her fish pond. Chen looks at the messages he received on his phone from Shudong. She tries to fish him and apologizes for her past mistakes. He deletes the messages and blocks her contact. Zio Amir asks him what he is looking at. They are having tea at a cafe at the airport. Chen recipes that it is nothing. He asks her what she is talking about. She recalls that her boss strictly asked her to capture him even if she stripped herself naked and sent him to his bed this time. She thinks it is hateful that he can stay indifferent even in the face of beauty at her level. She says that Chen is so young and rich that she wonders where he can get a higher position. The system peeks at her and tells about her details. Her original name is Zhu Yihan, but her professional name is Zio Mir. She is 26 years old and her appearance is 7-8 points. The girl's favorability towards the host is 60 points. Because of too high favorability, it is unable to bind with her. Chen crings and wonders if all his money went down to drain. It seems like he needs to lower the favorability first. He starts pretending silly and puts his pinky in his nostril. He tells her that she has got him wrong. He has just come here as an unemployed wanderer. Zio Mir feels embarrassed and asks him if he does not have a job. It seems Chen is probably running his own business or has a company. Otherwise, where does the confidence to spend lavishly come from? He replies that the money he used to buy gifts was from his dad. Now his dad's company has gone bankrupt because of his spending, owing the bank tens of millions. He grabs her hand and says he is meeting her to ask if she can refund some of the money spent on gifts. She feels sick of him suddenly and her favorability drastically starts falling. She yells at him and asks if he is broke and why he is pretending to be rich here. She has had enough of him throwing attitude at her time and again. She asks him if he is a man. He is a disappointment who is asking for refunding money. She yells that she must be out of her mind, wasting time with a loser like him. She dials someone's number. She calls him Lan and tells him she is at the coffee shop outside the airport. She tells him to hurry up and come pick her up. There is a loser bothering her, and she is scared. Chen looks at her and smirks, thinking he has met practical women in reality. But seeing someone so realistic and shamelessly distorting facts is genuinely a first. After a while, Lan enters the cafe roaring. He asks if he does not know who runs this territory in Seoul, as he is harassing his woman in broad daylight. Zio Mir runs towards him to hug him and says she is so scared. That pervert even grabbed her hand. Lan is surprised to see Chen there. He ignores her and runs towards Chen to shake hands. He asks him why he is here. He tells him that he is Chao Lan, who followed brother Bai to toast him yesterday. Chen replies that he remembers him. Lan says he regretted not having a few more drinks with him yesterday. Unexpectedly, he bumped into him here. Today, it is on him. He requests Chen to honor Lan by coming. Zio Mir is stunned to see that Lan is unexpectedly polite to Chen. Lan is a top-tier rich second generation in Seoul, with numerous family industries. Well-connected and influential. Lan scolds her and says she is so stupid that she does not know that Chen is his eldest brother. He tells her that Chen has enough money to bury her whole family alive. She wonders if he has such a background, what he was doing a while ago. She realized he was testing her sincerity, and she missed the opportunity. She thinks she must reclaim the moment. She apologizes to Chen and says she misunderstood him. The system notifies that the dog-licking relationship is successfully bound and the title Zio Mir will give him 25 strengthening points. Chen takes a sip from his cup, plays relaxed, and says he forgives her. She is young and inexperienced. He was just joking with her. She thanks him and says he is her favorite. Her favorability also increases towards him. Chen thinks that she is indeed a professional anchor. Her favorability will rise like chicken blood as long as she has money. Unfortunately, he will not simply let her go. Lan yells at her that he has boosted her popularity to millions and she is treating his brother to this foreign soy milk. 
He tells Chen that they should make today an unexpected encounter. He is hosting, and Chen must honor them with his presence. Chen replies that it is not a problem at all. He will show him the respect he deserves. Chen opens his car door for him and makes him sit carefully. Zio Mir also runs to sit with him. She grabs his arm inside the car and keeps her chest close. She asks him if he is still angry with her. He replies that's why he would be. She is worrying for nothing. He looks at his screen. She wonders why he is using the Shark Live app. Chen looks at an anchor's live stream and sends her multiple gifts. She is shocked to see him. Chen keeps tapping the gift icon and almost sends 3,000 gifts. Even the host of that live stream feels stunned and falls unconscious. Zio Mir was stunned as it was her first time to see someone receive gifts this quickly. She worries that money should have been hers if she had seized the opportunity. She understands that this man is playing with her. However, the way he spends money is really good for her. She thinks that if his fingers were not tapping the screen, it might be hitting her body. Her favorability towards him increases unimaginably. Lan brings Chen to the most famous private restaurant in Seoul. It's called Black Pearl, and it is a three-star restaurant. Lan says this place operates on a members-only reservation system, ensuring high privacy. But the most renowned aspects of this restaurant are its three main highlights. Chen says that one is the outstanding food, the other is the unique scenery and asks what about the third one. Lan says that Chen is genuinely experienced, he got the first two right. The third highlight point is the boss's daughter, Zhao Yuki. Zhao is sitting there playing an instrument when she looks at Chen. He is also shaken up to see her there. Zhao glances at Zio Mir holding his arm, and her favorability for him decreases by five points. She gets furious and breaks her musical instrument. Her eyes tear up, and she runs away from there. He is worried now as Zhao's side was so close to staging a counterattack. He wonders if it is going to overturn at a critical moment. He chases after her and catches her in the corridor. She yells at him that he toys with her emotions and asks him to let her go. Chen thinks that if it continues, the sensitivity will be lost. He has no choice but to risk it. He plays the victim and asks her if she has watched to the fore. She cries and asks why he is bringing up movies when she is talking about her affair. He replies that he is the tomato tycoon. He lights a cigarette, takes a puff, and exhales the smoke in the air as he wants to show himself a victim of unbearable life and responsibilities. He tells her that she should know about his extraordinary family background. She must be wondering why he has been content with a mundane life. He says that in the secluded family he belongs to, there is an unwritten rule that once the heir turns 18, they must spend 10 billion within a month to inherit the entire 50 billion family fortune. So he strives to spend the money diligently. He has invested in many projects, engaged in various investments and charitable activities, and participated in various environmental protection initiatives. The girl earlier was a streamer he tipped to keep spending money. He had to stage a little drama. He grabs Zhao's hand and says this matter is known only to her. He does not expect her understanding. It is just that this secret has weighed on him for too long. He bids her goodbye and tells her to take care of herself. Then he leaves her there and walks away. Zhao thinks that she must have been causing unnecessary trouble. He has been working so hard, contemplating the inheritance of the family fortune. She cannot believe she doubted him. She runs after him and hugs him from behind. She says she does not want to say goodbye and asks him not to leave her. It is her mistake to accuse him wrongly. She thinks he genuinely cares about her if he reveals secrets like the family inheritance. Her favorability level increases. Her current level is 92. They both return to the others with smiles on their faces. Zhao tells them that they do not need to apologize. Her mood was off earlier, affecting everyone's meal. Chen is her friend too, so that she will cover this meal. Lan is impressed by Chen to see that it only took him five minutes to sort it out. Zio Mir is jealous and thinks that Zhao is acting all high and mighty, making it seem like she is the main consort, but it is still unclear who will end up with the upper hand. 
She asks Chen who that sister is as he has not introduced her to them yet. Zhao tells her not to call him brother. He is probably younger than her, considering her age. Lan looks at both ladies and says it is not a battle on the same level. It is a complete one-sided domination. Chen tells them to stop fighting and start eating. He is hungry. Lan is trembling to see that he is not even angry. He admits that Chen's methods are genuinely mysterious and cunning. On one side is the famous shark anchor, Rich Brother, a reaper of wealth. On the other side is a locally renowned talented woman with aspirations higher than the sky. Lan says that Chen's maneuvers have already surpassed the so-called art of charming women. He is practically a male succubus. Originally, Lan was conquered by his wealth, but now Chen is becoming his spiritual idol. He says that he will follow him to the death. Chen returns to his campus. He thinks that the restaurant is so expensive. Fortunately, it was not he who paid money. Suddenly, he remembers to check the current progress of his strategy. He looks at the profile of Zio Mir and Zhao and finds that the favorability levels are already relatively high. He wonders if this is time to push for more progress aggressively. Suddenly, he sees another profile and wonders who this is. He looks at the picture and recalls that she is Yang's girlfriend. Initially, it was only a 25-point favorability level, but now it is 76. He has not seen an increase this much in a few days. He wonders if his charm is that impressive. While he is busy checking the progress, his roommates run somewhere. One says that he has heard someone confessing to a girl downstairs. The other laughs and asks if it is a pure love warrior charging into battle for love. Chen hears these words and finds them attractive. Someone outside the hostel buildings is confessing his love to his lover in a fancy way. He also sings a song for her. It is Yang. He tells her girlfriend that he was wrong. He should not have been mean to her and should not have treated her with cold violence. He tells her to think about their beautiful past and give him another chance. His girlfriend, Ji Ying, finds this offensive. Chen also comes there to see that and is surprised to see Yang, who is rehearsing for the ex-lover drama here. Ji Ying looks at Chen and runs towards him, completely ignoring Yang. He cries and asks her where she is going. She asks Chen if his anime is Chen Yuan. She is happy after finally finding him. Today is her lucky day. She forwards her mobile and asks him if she can add him on WeChat. She begs him not to reject her. The crowd wonders what is happening there and why there is another guy. They say that it hurts to see Yang losing. Yang is furious instead. He asks why it is Chen Yuan. He refuses to accept it. Zhe Ying has disappointed him so much. Chen looks at him and asks him if he senses frustration, finds it incomprehensible, and feels that Zhe Yin is inconsistent. Yang asks him what he means by that and why he still humiliates him. Chen tells him honestly that he has always envied Yang. With his handsome appearance and athletic prowess, effortlessly winning the hearts of the opposite sex, he seems to take girls' love for granted. But when he realizes he has lost that aura, he panics. His mind is filled with a desire for victory and success, yet he overlooks his girlfriend's feelings. Yang pushed her away bit by bit with his own hands. At this point, playing the pitiful card to seek reconciliation, he must feel like he has become a clown. Yang grabs his head and starts crying. He admits that he is wrong and the one to blame. The crowd is stunned to find that this is not a case of a third party intervening. Cold violence is indeed beneath dignity. When they were together, there was no consideration or kindness. What's the use of trying to salvage things now? Ji Ying is emotional to see that he understands her. Her favorability increases to 91 points. Wu Xiaofai is also in the crowd and wonders about Chen's relationship with that girl. He returns to tell Zhao. He enters the room and yells that Chen is cheating on her. She almost gets scared by his sudden entrance. She tells him that he must stop messing around. Anyone can cheat, but Chen Yuan cannot. It is impossible. He replies that there is a girl downstairs confessing to Chen Yuan. They were exchanging meaningful glances. Zhao says that Chen Yuan cannot control others' expression of their feelings. Besides, it does not necessarily mean anything significant. 
He shows her the news and asks her how she explains this. Chen is lavishly spending money on other women. She replies that Chan has told her about it, and the total amount he spent is more than 30 million. Wu Xiaofai is shocked to hear that Chen gave the female anchors gifts and has told her about it. She replies it is true. Trust is the foundation of any relationship. She pats his head and tells her never to mind it. He has been single since birth, so he will not understand this kind of telepathy of the heart. After that, she starts singing. Wu Xiaofi wonders how such a sensible person ended up acting so foolish. Chen is yawning as he is feeling sleepy. His friend Cheng Tao asks him to focus and asks who gets sleepy during a murder mystery game. Chen replies that he did not want to come in the first place. He begged him to come here. Those girls there ask Tao why he is being so loud. He might scare Chen Yuan. They just enjoy watching Chen Yuan sleep. One of them asks him if he has some time for her tonight. The other says that Chen seems tired and asks if he wants her to buy him a hazelnut tea. Tao tells him that if he does not come, these girls will not come either. A handsome guy like him will not understand the struggles of the ordinary guy. Chen points at Shudong and asks Tao to explain why she is here. Shudong is acting as well in the play. She sobs and says she abandoned her childhood sweetheart and ran away with the wealthy man. Then she got killed. But she feels she deserves it. There is no need to look for a culprit. She deserves this punishment. Her classmate tells her to calm down and says they cannot continue playing this way. Tao tells Chen that if Lin Shudong hears that he is around, it is tough for Tao to avoid tagging along. He asks Chen what is wrong with her. He has also heard that she has been seeing a doctor lately. It is related to some health issues. Chen wonders if he went too far. Although she deeply hurt him, she also sincerely desires repentance after forming a connection. He wonders if he is being too harsh, even if she is at fault and bears guilt. Suddenly, some random girl comes to him and says there is a rumor at school that he is the online sensation Mr. Some Smokey. She asks if it is true because his online handles are the same. A man comes there instantly and says if Chen Yuan is Mr. Smokey, he will take his head off and use it as a ball. That guy keeps going and says that Mr. Kuen Smokey has flaunted an incredible billion on Shark, but Chen Yuan is not even worth comparing himself to Mr. Smokey. Chen recognizes that guy. That guy goes to Shudong and introduces himself. His name is Lai Yuntao, and he owns this shop. He has noticed her for a while. He asks her if she would like to exchange WeChat contacts. Chen remembers that Lai Yunato was his rival in high school. He often bullied him, taking advantage of his wealthy and influential family. Chen thinks that if he wants to show off, he will let him do it thoroughly. Fortunately, he does not want to be too high profile in front of classmates. He also wants to give a stress test on someone. Chen moves forward and says he wants to introduce this guy to everyone. This wealthy guy is Lai Yuntao, his high school classmate. He is currently studying at a prestigious university and runs his own company. With assets in the millions, he can be considered a genuinely high-profile wealthy individual. All his classmates are charmed by Yun Tao. As for Chen Yuan, he is not precisely Mr. Tutia Smokey. His family recently received some compensation from a demolition, around 3 to 5 million. There has been a misunderstanding. Lai Yuntao is surprised that Chen has a few million in family assets. Shudong is shocked to know that Chen is not Mr. Kei Smokey. She thinks that on one side, there is an elite with assets in the million. Conversely, someone with some money used to have feelings for her. Her favorability starts to decrease drastically and reaches 15 points. She adds Lai Yuntao on her WeChat instantly. Lai Yuntao tells Chan Yuan that the world is strange. The girl Chen introduced added Yunato on WeChat. He whispers in Chen's ears that in the past, hitting him was like beating a dog. Now he can only be stepped on by Yun Tao. Then he tells his waiter that Chen Yuan is his classmate. He has made him very happy today, so the bill for his table is free. Chen puts hands on his face and laughs hysterically. His classmates wonder what has happened to him suddenly. He tells them that he is okay. 
it is just he suddenly understood some things. He thinks he gave Sudong the opportunity she wanted, but unfortunately, a leopard cannot change its spots. He will not sympathize with her because she does not deserve it. Chen leaves the cafe. Lai Yuntao asks him why he is leaving so soon. He tells him they are having a high school reunion tomorrow at Kyushu restaurant. He asks Chen if he is daring enough to come there. He replies that since Lai Yunato has invited him, he will come. At the reunion, Lai Yuntao tells everyone to enjoy food and drinks today. He will cover all expenses. He also says that those guys do not help him save money. It is meant to be spent. His friends praise him and say Yuntao is generous. He welcomes them and tells them to give him a nice word when Ruo Yu comes later. One stands and says he and Ruo Yu are a perfect match, talented and beautiful. They will all support him and help him succeed. Chen thinks that Yun Tao never misses any opportunity to show off. After a while, Ruo Yu enters the room. She apologizes to keep everyone waiting. She says the driver at home took a day off today, so she took a taxi and arrived late. Chen looks at Ruo Yu and thinks she is the only white moonlight that could illuminate his life during the three years of high school. She is so mysterious and noble, like an unsolvable equation that makes all the boys in the school lose their composure. Chen goes to her and asks if he can add her on WeChat for more accessible communication. Yun Tao gets irritated to see Chen doing this. He thinks he will make him regret that in no time. Ruo Yu agrees to share her contact. But she wonders who this person is, it feels like she has not seen him before. The system binds the dog-licking relationship among them. Her current favorability towards Chen is zero. For a successful counterattack, he will get a reward of 35 attribute points. This time, he will get the reward skills as well. Everyone in the room thinks that Chen was not this formidable before. They wonder why he has become so impressive now. Jia asks him if he is playing the role of a lackey for the wealthy second generation. She points at him and says she is not aware of him. He is tagging along with a few rich second generations, acting as their lackey and even hanging out with Liu Wenge. Those rich second generations are notorious scumbags. They have deceived so many innocent girls and Chen is helping them. Wenge tells her to stop talking nonsense. She yells that she did not say anything nonsense. She adds that Wenge toyed with her feelings and they broke up, yet seamlessly he moved on afterward. She starts sobbing and says she is all jade now. She also says Chen Yuan is trying to resell Ruo Yu's contact information by asking for her WeChat. Ruo Yu believes her and her favorability towards Chen decreased by 10 points. Yun Tao enters the conversation and asks Chen Yuan why he does not join him if he is short on money. He can introduce him to a job. He says that he is also from a wealthy family. Instead of being a lackey for them, he can work for Yun Tao. At least his money is clean. Chen thinks that Jia takes the initiative to smear and defame while Yun Tao comes to assist in the attack. It seems like they planned this. He smirked and thought if this were someone else, they probably would not be able to argue their way out of it. This time those guys willingly offered their faces for him to step on. Chen texts Zhang Heyashin to drive his Ferrari to the entrance of the Kyushu restaurant. They all are about to leave the hotel. Those fellows thank Yun Tao for treating them in this four-star hotel. Yun Tao peeks at Chen and Wenge and thinks these kids probably do not dare to show their faces anymore. He has one tonight. Yun Tao asks Ruo Yu if she wants him to drive her home. He says that tonight, he is her exclusive driver. He will never ask for a day off. She understands that he is trying to flirt with her. She politely refuses his offer. Suddenly, a guard comes to Yun Tao and asks if he can move his car. Yun Tao asks him if one cannot park while spending money at their restaurant. The guard replies that this is the situation. Their parking spaces are reserved for VIP guests after 9 p.m. They have a VIP arriving now. Therefore, he is asking Yun Tao to move his car. Yun Tao thinks that he would like to see how vital this VIP is. He waits by his car to see who is so powerful. After a while, a Ferrari La Ferrari arrives there. Yun Tao says that he has only seen this car at exhibitions. 
Then he sees Zhang Hayashin of Zhang Group coming out of that car. Yun Tao feels embarrassed and thinks this person is rumored to be quite influential in the wealthy second generation circle in Seoul. Luckily, he did not mess with him. Zhang gives the car keys to Chen. He puts his arm on Zhang's shoulder and thanks him for bringing him the car from such a long distance. Zhang replies that it is not a problem. They are like a family, so there's no need for formalities. It is his pleasure to bring the car for him. Yun Tao is shocked to hear that this car belongs to Chen Yuan. The fellows there wonder if Chen is so wealthy in real. One of them says that Chen's Ferrari can buy more than a dozen Lai Yun Tao's cars. Chen tells Zhang that he wants to introduce an old class fellow of his to him. Some girls scold Jia and ask what nonsense she was saying before. How can he be someone's lackey with so much wealth? Jia feels ashamed. Ruo Yu understands now that Lai Yuntao and Jia are slandering Chen Yuan. But despite his extraordinary worth, he did not defend himself at all. She finds him quite attractive. Her favorability increases towards him by 10 points. Chen grabs the chance and asks Ruo Yu if he may escort her home. She accepts his offer, and they leave in his Ferrari. While standing behind Yuntao, Wenj tells Zhang that sometimes the gap between people is even more significant than between humans and dogs. Yuntao feels insulted but cannot say anything. Chen Yuan is on his way to drop Ruo Yu at her home. While sitting in the car, she thinks she may have become too assertive and emotional. She is unfamiliar with Chen Yuan and hopping into his car abruptly seems a mistake now. She wonders what if something were to happen. Chen tells her that he has been paying attention for a while now. The pendant on her bag is Dikau Tanen. She is surprised to find that he knows this. He replies that he also likes watching Ottoman, especially Dika. He thinks his transformation looks handsome. She replies that is great. She has loved watching it since she was young. Unfortunately, none of the girls around her seem to enjoy it. They both look at each other. Then she downs her glance and starts blushing. Chen thinks that it is surprising to see Ryo use lively side. He wonders if her usual aloof demeanor could be a protective measure. Seeing her happy expression makes one irresistibly inclined to protect such beauty. He thinks he is experiencing the feeling of love for the first time in his life. They reach outside her home. Chen makes a sign from their mutual favorite cartoon and says that meeting a different Zio makes him happy compared to the usual encounters. She makes the same sign, tells him to call her Ruo Yu, and thanks him for escorting her back. They both laugh at their childish behavior. He turns back to his car. She looks at him and thinks Chen Yuan is quite interesting. Surprisingly, he does not find her childish. He is different from those oily and paternalistic guys. She opens the door, enters, and takes off her heels. Her mother scolds her and asks if she has not told her not to wander around these days and why she is coming back so late. She does not reply. Her mother asks how she has considered what they talked about blind date the last time. She tells her she knows her dad's company has been challenging lately. The investment from the Han family this time is crucial. They have no other choice. She becomes gloomy and asks if her marriage and happiness are not necessary. Why should she marry that playboy from the Han family just for the sake of the company's situation? Her mother replies that it is because they spent money to raise her. Everything she eats, uses, wears, and enjoys thanks to them. If her dad's company is destroyed, their family will be destroyed too. She softly tells her that Han Zio gang from the Han family may not be great, but circumstances are more critical than individuals. Besides, once married, men tend to become more responsible. She asks Ruo Yu if she wants her mother to kneel and beg her. Ruo Yu starts crying and says she understands. Chen is looking at the chat of that wealthy tycoon's group. They are talking on different topics. Suddenly, Zhang says that he has a big gossip. Chen wonders what Zhang Heashin is up to. Then, Zhang shares the big news with the group. It is about the engagement of Ruo Yu and Zio Gang. He also mentions that the Zio group is suspected of a financial crisis and the heiress Zio Ruo Yu may marry into the Han group. Chen is shocked to hear that and wonders if he got involved in the gossip. He cannot believe that Ruo Yu is getting married. 
he decides he will not let this happen. This time, he will not be timid anymore. He does not want to be passing by in her life again. He leaves for Ryo Yu. On his way, a woman looks at him and asks the man with her, Chen Yuan, if that is the running guy. He replies yes, that is him. Wearing big shorts and a short-sleeved shirt, just like in the video, looking like a rascal. That woman points him to stop. She tells him she is Shen Shuyi and asks if he is interested in becoming an internet celebrity. She gives him her business card. She works for the Dream Build Media Company. He replies that he is not interested and moves forward. She is stunned to hear his reply and says it is a decisive refusal. She wonders if he has already signed with another company. She needs to try a different approach. She runs after him and tells him to wait. She says her company is a legitimate multi-channel network with solid capabilities and offers competitive salaries. More importantly, her company has the godly wealthy Mr. Smokey always backing them up. If he do not sign with them, he must be careful of getting blacklisted by Mr. Smokey. Chen is furious and wonders why this stubborn professional woman is so annoying. She even does not know he is Mr. Smokey. She is just wasting his time. He wonders if this woman thinks he will not do anything to her. Just because he cannot does not mean others cannot either. He texts in his wealthy friends group that a psycho woman from Dream Media is harassing him. She is even using his identity to deceive others. He asks if anyone can help him resolve this. His friends respond quickly. Zhang says he will handle this matter. Shen Shui asks him if he has not thought about her offer. Suddenly, her boss calls her. He scolds her and tells her to come to him now if she does not want to lose her job. She is scared and tells him that she did not do anything. Chen walks away and thinks about how the Han group dares to compete with him for a woman. He will show them what he is made of. Ruo Yu's parents are taking her to meet Han's family. Her mother tells her that this time she is just going to meet the children of the Han family and exchange greetings. She tells her not to feel down and cheers her up. She says that their family's Yuan Han group is facing a financial crisis, and her dad's hair turned gray as he went around asking for help. This time, Uncle Han is willing to contribute money to help them, and his request is not unreasonable. They should consider making a new friend. Besides, Han Zio Gang seems quite sincere, so getting to know him is worth it. Ruo Yu's mobile rings. She is surprised to see Chen Yuan's text. He is asking her where she is. She replies that she is on the way to Emperor Place Restaurant. There is something scheduled there. He asks her to tell him about her exact location once she arrives there. He will be waiting. She wonders if Chen knows she is going on a blind date. She thinks that if she has to be with someone, compared to that disgusting Han Zio gang, Chen Yuan seems a better choice. Her dad calls her and says he has never asked her for anything. But now he asks her that if anything happens, she should stay calm for a while. She should consider it helping dad. She says she gets it. They reach their destination. A man from the Han group receives them and says that President Han is waiting for General Zio in meeting room 305. Seeing Ryo Yu for the first time, that guy thinks that he has heard about the natural beauty of the Zio family's daughter for a long time. Seeing is believing. She is indeed quite impressive. It is too bad that she will soon become the meat in the Han family's mouth. Suddenly, Ruo Yu notices her father holding a bag with some documents. She wonders why he has bought it on a blind date. That guy takes them to the meeting room. Mr. Han is already there. Seeing Mr. Zio, he tells his son Zio Gang to make tea for his uncle. They will soon be family. Ruo Yu sees some papers on the table and gets that it is not a blind date. She wonders what her dad wants to do. Han Group is one of the largest giant groups in Seoul. It has many businesses and even involves many grey industries. Han Sanshui, the helmsman, is notorious for being cunning and sly, always early to rise when profit is involved. Mr. Fini Han comes to Ryo Yu and says she has truly grown up, becoming a poised and graceful young lady. She smiles and says he is over-praising her too much. Meanwhile, she texts Chen and says she is in room 305. 
Zio Gang grabs her hand and says that since the last party where he met her, he has been unable to focus on tea, has lost his appetite for food, and even dreams about her when he sleeps. He tells her not to worry. This time his dad will help her family get through tough times. She pulls her hand back and thanks him unwillingly. He takes his hand at her back and tells her there is no need for politeness between them. After all, they will soon become a family. With that, he touches her hips. She slaps his hand and tells him to control his hands. Her dad scolds her and asks why she is talking to Han Zio Gang like that. It is so impolite. He apologizes to Mr. Tan Hans and tells him not to mind his daughter. She is young and does not know what is better. He thinks Zio Gang and his daughter make a good match. Mr. Kong Hans laughs and says since that is the case, they should take a seat, and Mr. Mankon Zio must review the contract. They all sit around the meeting table. The manager hands them the documents and says this document is the equity transfer agreement. He goes through the additional clauses in detail with Mr. Nomad Zio. He says that according to the agreement, the Han family provides 100 million in funds to the Zio family's Yuan Hang group to purchase a 20% stake, with the condition that Zio Ryuo Yu marries Han Zio Gang. This 100 million yuan will be injected into Yuan Hang Group's public account in installments. In other words, the final installment of funds will be transferred once Zio Ruo Yu gives birth to the Han family's next generation. She is shocked to hear the conditions. She grabs the paper, reads it, and says that is impossible. She starts crying and asks her dad if he has brought her here to sell her. Her mother tries to calm her down. She says she does not want to calm down. She does not understand why their business failure should affect her life. She asks if they do not know that Han Zio Gang indulges in eating, drinking, prostitution, gambling and all vices outside. She says she will never marry him. Suddenly, her father slaps her. Shockingly, she tries to understand what is happening.